Today we have a very uh, simple tooth compared to some of the other teeth I've done as live demonstrations. This is an upper second premolar, tooth number 13. The interesting thing is how the pre-op radiograph, the conventional 2D radiograph, shows uh, I can read a PDL all the way around that root tip. Maybe there's a little bit of, of uh, hazy darkness off the distal side of the root apex, but really the bone looks intact around that. This is what's so interesting about comium CT. Look at the root. It's barely in the, uh, in the cortical bone, the thin cortical plate over the sinus. So there's really no bone that it's embedded in. The whole buccal and lingual uh, apical third are not encased in bone at all, except for laterally in the mesial and distal. We see uh, also soft tissue um, hypertrophy is associated with the necrotic pulp and the infection trailing out the end of the root canal. We can see in this CT view the, uh, the soft tissue in the floor of the sinus exactly centered around this root tip. No big surprise there. Just know that you cannot see this on conventional radiography. So if you have a CB, CT machine and you're asking yourself, when should I take this? The answer is uh, yes, because you, you don't know what's going on there until you take it. You don't know if you need a CT until you take a CT Cyronic. And here's a really nice uh, crisp sharpened view where you can see the apical bifurcation um, of the canal and the longest part is actually the smaller part. Uh, we'll see which one my file decides to go into. And then here's uh, yet another view. This route has a single canal. Um, it has a uh, uh, fairly good shape. It's a young man and so I'm going to be doing just minimal shaping here. Uh, probably bring in the uh, 1806 Traverse uh, rotary negotiating file and uh, see if that doesn't get us to length. Okay, um, I'll catch you on the other side of the glass wall. <laughs> okay. You about ready to get going here? Yeah. Okay, Hunter, we're gonna be making a lot of noise here. Bear with me, please. Please wash. So I'm going to cut the enamel back. And then I'm going to switch to a, a new burr. I haven't used it before. This is a SS White Burr. It's a conservative carriage removal device. Come in from down below. I can't see this. Okay, suction. Wash, please. Here's your latch grip. Okay. okay, carries removal burr. This is the larger one of the three. And the concept here is it's not sharp enough to cut healthy dentin. So let's see what we get. Wash, please. Back up. Hmm. Pretty hard. 
hard in spite of the stain. So we may be creating a hybrid layer there. Let's put a little bit of dye on it, see if that helps see the difference. Not too bad. Let me just shave it a little bit at the base. There we go. A little less stain there. No. Okay, that's good enough for me. We're going to go ahead and set the uh, apex locator handpiece up. I'm going to put some lube in there. Let's make sure I have the access opening I need right into the canal. Okay, we need to take an LA Diamond Burr. This is an oval canal at the, the top, so I'm going to put the LA Diamond in there and just give it a little tiny bump. Still at the slower RPM. Okay. I love that burr. So sad if somebody else designed it instead of me. Okay, nice. All right, let's put some lubricant in here. Let's get a cordless apex locator driven Merida handpiece here. This is a trial to ZX3. Um, these guys have been making these cordless handpieces forever. Okay, we're going to have it on 300 RPM, relatively low torque limit. And let's see if this is going to light off by itself. Usually it does. You don't even have to turn it on. Let's see if that's the case today. It reads a, just a super micro current. There we go. Interesting. Our estimated length is what? 22 and a half plus. 22 and a half plus, almost 23 millimeters. So we won't be surprised if we hit the stop. And I just felt a little tiny impediment there. I'm going to find out what's going on. That's where the canals bifurcate, undoubtedly. Um, that was at about 20. I was at about 22, here we are, 22 millimeters. Yep, that's the impediment. All right. And the bigger, the larger diameter curvature is uh, in the buckle direction, as we saw from the pre-op CTs. Go ahead and bend the file here. This one I don't think need is a, it's not a terrible um, impediment. It's it's just a s slight curvature, right where they bifurcate. All right, now I've got my stop oriented so I know where the bend is when I get paid, and I'm gonna I'm intentionally going to the buckle. And you know what? Super easy. That's, as I said, that's the larger of them. Let's see if I can get into the lingual one. I'm going to flip it around here. Yeah, I think I'm in it. Notice me getting a finger rest. I don't want to pull this out of the secondary canal because I might not get back in there. Okay. 
let's put a bin on an 08. I want to just see if a smaller file will get us in there. So we do know left uh, buckle from lingual. Uh, not a huge bend. And I'll know if it's in the lingual because it'll be tighter. Cute bend on it. Make sure it hasn't buckled. These files can get pigtailed three times around and they will not come apart. They're made so well. They'll not come apart unless you rotate them in place more than 90 degrees in a clockwise direction. Let's see if this is going to get me into the lingual. Sure, that one's going to get be negotiable. Let's just see for X what happens when you put a straight one in. It's always interesting to me because the I believe the smaller accessory canal is actually a straighter direction. Okay, I'm not going to dink around in there. Uh, let's see if we can gauge. Apex locator comes in from the handpiece and it says I'm in the ballpark let's put a 15 and see what happens with that 20 is bigger than wants to allow endo bender pliers designed those little guys about 30 35 years ago. That's ridiculous. Okay, here we are. Got the file bin. Here's the buckle direction. Apex locator. Don't leave home without it. Okay, we're long. I'm going to rotate just barely back, and it says I'm right there. I'm going to change my microscope angle. So this is important because I need to see exactly what the reference, how it's meeting that reference point. I want it to be at right angles. You know, I should pick the lingual. I usually want the longer one if I have my choice, but it's straighter towards the lingual. Okay. So, and you can see my curvature still to the buckle. So it gets real uh, apically resorbed. This has been necrotic for a little while. Okay, it says I'm long, says I'm right there. Cool, length is confirmed. 21 and a half. Yes, 21 and a half plus. Okay, done with the apex locator. <coughs> kind of a straight 10K file. Mm -hmm. Let's see uh, if the impediment still remains. I think it will. 
10K file test is just an unbent 10K file. If there's a smooth curve without an impediment, this little guy will go around 160 degrees of bend. But when he hits a little irregularity, that's a whole different thing. Now we see that it's going to length like about a half millimeter short. So there's a question about uh, the decay at the deno enamel junction. Yes, uh, obviously we're going to give that another look before the post tendonic restorative effort. There we go. So there is still an impediment, but it's real close to the end of the root canal. It's like, uh, I'd say that's the last quarter millimeter. Awesome news. So we're going to go ahead and gauge this canal. Here's 20. It's just barely short. Let's see what happens with the 30. He's a young man's tooth, so it's not real calcified. Here's the 30. It's going essentially the same depth. Here's a 40. and it's stopping up about a millimeter and a half short. That's typically considered an 06 taper. Step back of a millimeter and a half, here's a 50, and it's stepping back three millimeters, so I really don't think I need to make a bunch of shape at the end of this root canal. EDTA, please. Okay, so we're going to depend on gentle wave to do the rest of the job in this root canal. It's got buccal lingual fins as most premolar single canal premolars do. Let's go take a look at that decay there, see what we see. Okay, I thought that was just a little bit of bleeding, but that is a little bit of decay right there. And yes, we still have around the DEJ, so I have to come back in here and, and work on that. This is, back here is super hard dentin, and before the disclosing solution, it, it looked the lightest of all. I'm not sure. Let's see if there's <laughs> decay coming off here right now. I think it is. Sharp spoon. I guess I'm like uh, every other dentist doing a root canal today. Uh, one gets <laughs> through the access so I get in a root canal and do something uh, really interesting. Let's see the burn there. Yeah, we're probably losing this enamel right here. Wow, 
wash, please. <laughs> this is a one quarter RPM. My heads up camera. So easy to see weird directions. Okay, sorry folks, it's like watching grass grow. Almost done. Wash, please. Solution. We are ready to build a platform. We're gonna do gentle wave. We're gonna nurse this thing out. Let me scrape around her while she's getting some of the tools together. That's pretty hard then. I'm not getting anything up here. Okay, one of the most important things to getting a good seal is uh, To be careful to scrub the uh, the tooth in your platform staging and uh, the adjacent teeth. Um, I want my uh, sound seal to be on any adjacent surface to help stabilize it. So I'm going to put it against the back surface of this uh, first premolar. Also, if it was closer to the clamp jaws, I would lay a little layer on that. I may still do that. With the premolar, we're going to have a much smaller platform. Uh, one time we were replacing these, uh, we were to learn how to do this, we were replacing these missing walls with glass ionomer and with uh, bonded composite and they all leaked. And so, um, I, have a, I need to get a perch point. They all leaked and we all were reminded that these materials take some time to cure before they create a predictable seal. And the thing that carried the day and works the best to this day is um, the sound seal. So I'm actually going to put a couple in here because I've got a really oval canal in the coronal half. Rounds out as it gets more apical.
Scissors. Scissors. I use this stuff liberally. You really don't want to have to remake a platform if you don't have to. Okay, let me even this out a little bit. So I'm just going to take that filter off and I'm going to light cure it with my handy dandy plasma arc curing wand. This is a den mat tool. I love this tool. Nothing more like eternity than waiting for uh, light curing to happen. So this will do it in at least half the time, sometimes third of the time. Are you going to take the bit of paper off of this? Oh, I think I'm going to see if I can just leave them in there. You have this stuff. Hmm? I think uh, I, it's going to be fine. Okay, so filter. It's a little tough to do it under the scope right here. All right, there we go. Lots of goop. And usually, um, she was right in asking me about that. Usually, uh, I want to have a sponge in, especially in molar access cavities. Take that for me. Okay, so instead of that taking several minutes, we're done in less than a minute. I'm going to go back to LA Diamond Burr. Slow RPM. Usually like to have a little water spray because gets all the junk out. Let's see what we have up in there. Okay, here's my gutta percha. I'm going to drop in the cavity. I'm going to be more on the distal wall because that's the one that's still present. I don't want to overcut them in usual. I lose my seal. Let's see if I can get those little guys out. Here's an angle to explore that really spears this stuff sometimes. Here we go. Another great tool is Yoshi Terauchi's uh, file retrieval kit. He has a really cool little gutta percha removal. Tip. Okay, so there's the, the first one.
low RPM. I don't want to cut any more tooth structure. I want to taper the sound seal to the edge of the tooth, as we see here. I'm uh, doing my best not to leave any um, flash that will get peeled up during the process. And I'm still working on the mesial extent here. I'm going to turn the water off so we can see a little bit better. There we go. There's here they got a perch cone. Too big. I've got a premolar attachment come, or a procedure instrument coming in here. Okay. And not like that. So let's cut that back. So we're easily more than halfway through this root canal because I'm just about ready to do gentle wave and after that I am ready to obturate. Last little piece of gutter perch out of there. I should have just done as she said and taken it out when we put this on. I guess that's just a little bit of pink smear. So let's do some gentle waving. Uh, actually, I want to taper that orifice a bit. Remember, this is sound energy and it, it doesn't move around sharp contours as well as smooth contours. So is it necessary to negotiate the canals? We have a question. Negotiate the canals before gentle wave. Yes, it is. Um, there's differing uh, approaches to, to, um, to how much instrumentation you're going to do before and after gentle wave. Um, it's really trippy to, to stay a millimeter, millimeter short. And, uh, and find out uh, what the shape is without even touching it. Um, sometimes uh, I do that, and uh, then after the gentle wave, I can st stop in the middle of the uh, EDTA cycle, do a little gauging. If I have to make a little tiny cut there, then uh, that's a good time to make it. And then I put the uh, instrument back on, and I'm finishing up by removing that last little smear layer that I created by finishing the prep. Okay, so we're going to be looking at that little clear bubble on the top. Unlike the uh, molar procedure instrument. Sorry. Still getting used to my scope. Okay. Okay, here we go.
So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the presence of a bunch of air bubbles. Now these little intermittent things are exactly what is expected. See they immediately dissipate. You okay there? Doing okay? Mm -hmm. All right. We're about two thirds of the way through the root canal. The uh, anterior premolar procedure instrument is a little bit easier to hold a seal on at the uh, top surface of the platform because it's got a spongier uh, little gasket around it. Okay, so uh, the leak test has passed. We don't have leakage in the mesial area where the two structures missing. We're now going into the hypochlorite cleaning cycle. Uh, it's targeting 3% sodium hypochlorite. Currently, we're at about 4.8%. In the the hypochlorite mixture is out of range, so it's telling us it wants to have something checked out. Got it. Okay, so we're checking the uh, fluid levels. We're checking the connections. I'm going to go back and recreate that seal. You can stop at any time in the middle. Sometimes you want to just uh, make sure you have the right angle. It's not that easy to hold in one specific space for that long. Okay, we're at a minute 17. So basically, um, <coughs> the platform is a custom gasket for each tooth so that we have a, a seal inside the root canal system because we want to have a negative pressure environment there. And that's created by the backwash of the fluids and the venturi effect created when that happens. The cleaning happens when the uh, vibrating port that is uh, that is redirecting the fluids back towards the handle to create this vacuum. Um, it, it vibrates that little device, that little tube, and that is sending a sonic signal. You okay there? Mm -hmm. All right. No, uh, no taste in your mouth or discomfort? Okay. You okay? Any questions? Okay. We're doing great. Here we go. Okay. We're almost halfway through this part. This is a 10 minute process in total. Here we go. Back to work. <coughs> Next time uh, we do a demo, I'll have uh, a copy of Erica Branson's beautiful video showing, showing the vibration of the solutions and the junk in.
lateral canals all the way at the end of the root canal. It's, it's amazing. There's almost more activity in the smaller parts of the canals at the end of the root than there is uh, in the more coronal, more accessible areas. And that's probably, I think of it as uh, just because the concentration of sound energy, just like a uh, hearing impaired person used to have a, an ear trumpet, and that would take sounds, concentrate it down to small and smaller diameters of, uh, of that inverse trumpet. And uh, so it did intensify, and I can't imagine the root canal isn't a perfect shape for that to happen as well. So we're at three minutes. I always run the longest cycle because why wouldn't I? You never know how many lateral canals need to get cleaned out. Yeah, get what? So Marie is going to get the hypertonic saline that uh, is in the refrigerator. We used chilled hypertonic saline after the gentle wave procedure. <clears throat> because of the negative pressure environment, um, it's essentially the same as putting a soda straw sealed to this tooth and sucking on as hard as you can for 10 minutes. It's going to open up the capillary beds in there. So whereas in times past, we might have feared uh, bleeding canal because it usually meant that we'd done something wrong, that we had perforated the tooth or there's some, we all fear a hypochlorite accident. But um, this bleeding is virtuous and sometimes uh, I think most people that get used to it and uh, learn not to worry about it, just wait it out for three to five minutes until it stops, um, will be most concerned after they get through that experience with a tooth that doesn't bleed after. Uh, root canal treatment or after gentle wave. Okay, we're at four and a half minutes. Hmm. I like these new uh, black rubber dam clamps. They are so um, much less reflective. So she's got that hypertonic saline. We're going to uh, just now finish up the hypochlorite cycle. And that completes five minutes of sodium hypochlorite activity. You can see on the, uh, on the monitor, by the way, this is doing a 30 second rinse before the EDTA cycle goes through. <coughs> if we can have that other image back on the monitor. This is the uh, molar procedure instrument and the projection with a little arrow on it, that is the, uh, I call it the tuning fork. Uh, I think that drives Merzad wild because it's not really a tuning fork. But <laughs> It vibrates, it creates the sonic energy in there. And it's also the port that the fluids shoot down at 6,000 PSI. There's a curved uh, incidence uh, surface on the end of that, it's closed off, and that's what shoots the solutions back up in a coronal direction. That's what creates the venturi effect. That's what makes sure that it's safe to use sodium hypochlorite in here, even in open apex cases and cases that are under the sinus. Now, there's a question about earlier about negotiation before gentle wave. <coughs> How much are you going to do? Uh, if you have roots in sinus space, you want to be super careful. You probably don't want to be patent. This is a, a new paradigm in endodontics. For decades, I've taught people to be patent. And since all this debris gets knocked loose and sucked out coronally, um, we don't have to worry about packing pulp tissue at the end of the root canal or dentin debris. Okay, that's a minute of smeared layer removal. Just about done. Uh, awesome patient here. So the advantage of gentle wave for endodontics is uh, most dramatically taking a two-visit endo practice into single visit. Uh, the productivity is much better. Patients don't want to come back a second time. <clears throat> and now we don't have to worry about irrigation failures because the efficacy of this uh, multisonic device. We're at a minute and 45. 
just about finished. It's going to do a 15 second rinse. Two, one, zero, and that's it. It's now rinsing, a little short rinse cycle, and we are ready to obturate. What time, what time is it now? 2.40. 2.40? Did we start right at 2? Okay, so we're 40 minutes into this case. And we just accessed, got rid of the decay, negotiated the canal, did a light gauging routine. There we go. Microscope set up in the right spot. Interesting. These canals and pulp chambers look so um, clean. Now you will get particulate matter up uh, out of a primary canal, especially a big one like this. It's interesting that the sound energy hugs the dentin wall of the canal and actually works less on the tissue in the center of the canal than it does um, less than it does on, a, on the ape, tiniest apolateral canals. Let's try paper points and see what this is uh, going to dry like. Why, why isn't it bleeding? Well, this root is in air. It's in his sinus space. It's not that surprising that That's some suc mini suction. Mm -hmm. uh, just that suction is good. Okay, so what if uh, what if the apex of the tooth is lying on a dehissed sinus? Um, the pre-op image confirmed that. So all I've got at the end of this root is soft tissue. I don't have any bony tissues. Um, it doesn't make any difference. Remember, it's not a positive. It's a negative pressure. And the only way that a sinus affects the gentle wave negatively <coughs> is, and look at that big lingual fin probably going all the way down the length of the canal. Let's check it with the paper points. The part that peaks out the end is wet and bends. Okay, we're at 21 millimeters. So we had 21 and a three quarters. This may have shortened up a little bit. Let's fit a cone at 20. I'm going to fit a, an 06 cone. Trim to a 40 tip diameter. Remember I gauged and I had a 40 fitting at length of 50, 60, step back one and a half millimeter increments. I will put two cones in here, but not for the cone fit. I don't take working films very often. I will take a cone fit film. Not, it's not as accurate as an apex locator. But um, it's just that one last chance to fuss it in and get it just a little bit more perfect. So I'll, I'll go ahead and take it. I really hate redoing stuff. Okay, put my thumb on it. Well, am I fitting close enough here? I am not. Okay, we're going to go to an 04 taper. Could I have a, a, a 40? 04?
I may have to put a shaping file down there if this isn't going to behave when I'm cone fitting. And it was the lingual cusp tip, right? Yes. Okay. Where is this measuring? Okay. Let's gauge it again. EDTA solution. A nice case example. This is a thing that a lot of people fuss with, have challenged, probably the most challenging part of Gentle Wave once you learn how to make a good platform. Yeah, can't do that. Okay. All right. So, gauging. Here's a 30. Nice tight bind there. I should probably be fitting a smaller tip file. Let's see what happens with a 40. It fit, as I remember, just about the same place. Sorry for anybody that's car sick. Okay, here's the 40. It's back a millimeter and a half. Okay, I was wrong. Let's get Peyton with a 20. And there's a little, just a little mini impediment right there. I think it's great because it's a large eighth of diameter. Okay, let's fit a 3004. Still don't think I need to cut a bigger shape down there. Again, the younger the patient, the less likely you need to cut shape because now we can get it clean without cutting a bunch of den. Yay. Okay, here we go. Length of the canal, we want this to fit at least to 21, and it does. It's actually perfect. It's 20 and 3 quarters. I think we've lost a little bit of length in this case. Let's go ahead and take a radiograph, and we'll find out shortly. Using a Nomad and a De DEXA sensor open for me. Hold still. Okay, x ray image. There we go. I am about three quarters of a millimeter short. Nice. Now, uh, options on this one of the options is to uh, put a carrier to place. When you have bifurcation like that, there's still an impediment there. Okay, so um, here's a couple questions. What about post-op sensitivity and pain? Um, it's uh, post-op sensitivity and pain. I'm, I'm seeing less in my patients. Most of my emergency cases would have been left open uh, for at least a day and then taken to completion on the next appointment. Now we're doing for some of these demos uh, uh, single visit at the time that we first opened it up on some teeth that have been super inflamed, lower C-shaped molars, uh, upper second molars, and the patients are reporting it. It's anecdotal. I don't have a big end to back this statement up, but in general, the reportage is that there's much less post-op sensitivity. How many mLs of sodium hypochlorite is used during general wave per minute? No idea. Okay, let's, can I try just a smaller cone and see if it'll fit a little closer? Yeah. I think, I think I need to be happy with this one. Here's the 25, see if I can get me. Now there's, here's the tight side and then there's the big, that looser side on the buckle. Be sure to ga grab the cone at right angles when you touch the reference point or you'll have an error. Okay, so this cone went long. Yeah, so we've got the right one in the 30. All right, let's dry the canal and fill it. 
Um, I do need a second cone, so I'll just take one of these as my secondary cone. I'm going to do a single cone down pack <coughs> with elements free. I have my backfill. I'm going to use a, uh, a tin taper plugger. So I get a .10 taper backfill cone. Love those. And we're ready to dry the canal, place the sealer, and finish this little guy up. Okay, suction. Uh, the sealer, this is a bioceramic sealer, BCHF. Same as the uh, classic BC, only it uh, withstands temperatures up to 220 degrees Celsius instead of the 180 that the previous one was all about. Let's see how, okay, we're getting a nice dry mark, and that is at... This is so accurate. It's at 21 and a half. It's drying exactly to length. So let's put the sealer in. Let's finish the root canal. Let this young man go home. Let the old guy go home too. There we go. Make sure you have enough because this sealer can fill in a lot of gaps. We're not going to down pack nearly as far as we usually do. Here's the gutta percha cone on the buckle side. I know your canal. No way. Okay. That's kind of sad. And there we are to length. Button's turned on here. We have got to perch 200 degrees C. The ring switch here. We don't need to tighten a collet. There's a spring tensioning here that'll hold it, and there's a little uh, hex nut there to keep it from rotating. So let's do the down pack. And oh, I need to throw another cone in there first. Yeah, right here. Most common error made with an uh, electric heat source is shorting the heating time. So heat it at least two seconds, let it hang out on the gutta percha for another couple of seconds. And uh, you're going to get you're going to get a uh, lesser, much lesser chance of pulling the cones out, which is a little maddening. You just let them cool off, straighten them out. I'm going to shove this down here. We're probably going to have it collapse a bit. That's why I threw the second cone in place. All right. Is this? This is the shortened down pack for continuous wave now. Sorry, should have warned you. Hear a beep. I'm going to rotate this. Usually, I will put an instrument right at the crook there. Helps it pull straight out. She's going to hand me the sealer. I'm going to actually do two down packs on this thing. So big, I'm worried. Uh, can I have the plugger again? I think I goofed that little hole a bit. I'm not sure it's still there. This job, okay.
Backfill cones are the same exact geometry as the plugger. I'm going to sear this off again, 1001, 1002, 1003. It shuts off automatically at 1004, so four seconds. Rubber rebounds, so when you're condensing it, hold a firm pressure. Let it set. Remember that the plugger is a heat sink. Okay, I'm going to down pack again. I don't know how big this canal is laterally. Sorry. I'll need the sealer. Just about ready to take a obturation radiograph. Kind of hoping for a little surprise package, you know, you never know. CTs do give you a pre obturation hint that uh, you might have a lateral accessory canal, like we saw at the apex of this tooth. But then even though you think you've uh, got it all figured out, <laughs> you'd be surprised at how often you'll find one, two, or three more portals of exit than you had any awareness of. Walter Hess was right. I think he was chronically depressed, but nope, he didn't make that stuff up. Root canals are complicated. The coolest thing about, especially right now, is we now have the tools to manage it in all of its complexity. And that is going to relate to a win. One well, of my friends said, well, there's no evidence-based uh, randomized clinical trials showing it's any better outcomes. And um, I said, well, we have some really great SEMs showing a lack of bacteria, substrate, anything. That's about going to do it for us right here. Let's take a radiograph. Open for me. Thank you. Nice. Both of them are filled. That little guy stayed small the whole time. Let's get a different view. Okay, here's a little bit of a distalized view. Can you lighten that for, for us? Oh, that looks really nice. I like that view. Right on lengthwise. Uh, microscopic, can you get, give me just a little bit more and then we'll we're going to magnify. There you go. And then let's look up there. There's a little, there's a little trail, sealer trail. Can you ma uh, zoom that? Right there. Okay. I think it's going to work out. Looks looks pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Do I still look for tug back? Yes, I do. I want to have a, a cone fit just the same as usual, but now I can cone. Now I've had to learn how to cone fit smaller cones because I'm cutting smaller shapes. Um, let's see if we have an air abrasion unit. Is this on? It is. Okay. I'm using a crystal mark <coughs> air abrasion unit. These guys are the past masters of air abrasion, they, they were the first ones to bring it to dentistry in the 50s, actually. And it was just becoming popular, and the board and air rotor handpiece came out, <coughs> and that they were beta cam to uh, VHS there. But I'll tell you, there's no better way to clean the access cavity than with air abrasion. Uh, we're telling our restorative dental colleagues that uh, we, as the endodontist, should be placing the restoration. And if that's the case, I think we bear a responsibility to give a res restoration that 
that is, uh, is worthy of the best restorative dentist that you're going to work with. Porter. Nice. I'm using my new uh, minimally invasive plugger set. Uh, this is going to be pretty cool looking, I think, on the uh, mesial view in the CT because it's so broad here. So um, let's go ahead and put some uh, etch in there and some glass ionomer. Just talking to my Good friend uh, Daniel Cherney, my 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 guru for all bonding questions and answers. Um, he he liked the fact that I was using air abrasion, but he said you still want to do a 20 second etch and a 30 second wash. I'm going to put glass on them, or so that if the treating dentist wants a post, it'll be quite easy to take it out, but otherwise um, impervious to leakage. And then uh, if they don't need a post or if they don't think they need a post, then uh, they can just do, put a bonding composite above. This is Voco's uh, glass anomer. Oh, I'm sorry, we're putting a bonding agent in first. Got ahead of myself. set up so until I can thin that out and get rid of it. It'll look like a huge void if I'm not careful. And here comes the plasma arc. Uh, the only time I need to be really careful about the speed of curing is uh, if I'm doing deep buildups. So all you got to do is do a layered technique. Uh, question is, do I charge for gentle wave? I don't. Um, I just, I'm doing root canals in less time than I did before. So um, I'm not sure I, I, I need to do that. But everybody has their own practice. You start out with your own fees. If you're in a really tight fee area, um, then you might need to do this to be able to afford uh, the benefits. Okay. Let's see if we can get some focus here, though. That's a little bit better. Nothing less important and more uh, irritating than uh, a void between layers. She's going to hand me a sponge. We're going to put a little tempet in here. Look smaller until you put it in the access cavity. I don't know how it does that, but it does. Uh, let's see if I can get that in there a little tighter. Okay, guys, this is the boring part. You might want to go to the bathroom and get a snack. 
come back after we have images. to the right for me. Uh, you can lose that. If I go, get rid of it. This stuff really is uh, slow to cure anyway. Glass on where they're already set up with this amount of light. So you just kind of stretch it. Put it like that, maybe. Okay. You mean in the distal? Hmm? Sorry? Yeah, there's some in the distal that we can take it off now. On the distal? There's some. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to shorten the occlusion. Okay, we're gonna, your tooth's gonna be a little shorter because you need a crown on it. That's super important. If you don't get a crown on it, you could be wasting your, uh, my time and your money if, uh, if you bite on this wrong and split the tooth, and then we can't save it. So for sure, um, make plans to get a crown on this thing in the near future. Is Genoway more effective than ultrasonic? Uh, yeah, ultrasonic is a signal uh, frequency, usually in the 40,000 hertz area, but um, it's a, and it only has a, a limited range. I, st I still use it to get rid of uh, large debris, especially if I'm going to consider doing negative pressure irrigation. But lost there. Thank you. Take the rubber dam off. Wait a sec, is that my field down there? Yeah, just a little bit more. Just a taste. Turn to the right, please. Thank you. No. There we go. So we end another live demo on the Dell DE Labs website. We love doing these. This is the coolest thing I might have done in my career. It's so fun to see people from Moscow and everywhere else in the world looking in on this. Okay. Check the occlusion. Turn this way. Turn to the right for me. Close your teeth together, please. <laughs> I can't see either. Okay, relax your lips just a little bit. I just need to see how your teeth are touching. Close down. Okay. All right, on your back teeth. There you go. Down like that. Okay, cool. All right, let's get imaging. It's probably going to be a half an hour before we have the uh, CT imaging uh, done, but I'll have that back for you. And uh, we'll put that on 
either in the recorded session or um, if you're still hanging around at the end of this one. Thank you very much for uh, being with us, and I hope to see you next demo, probably next Thursday.